I'm record. Okay, so we are alive with our March 29th chapter presidents and chapter advisors okay. meeting. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you are not muted, I'm going to mute you. Otherwise, please mute yourself just to help with meeting noise. Um, as always, share your video. It's great to see your faces if you're not if you're able to. Um, and then we'll share the slides in the chat room and the notes um, that get taken um, on our website after the event is um, after we've finished the meeting. All right, so we're going to jump into it today. Um, our agenda looks short, but we've got uh, a lot of conversation about some of these topics, so we'll go through them um, hopefully and allow for a lot of that open discussion with, uh, with everybody on the line. All right, Michelle, you are up first. All right, so um, big to do item off my plate on Friday. Um, all of the grit and distance pins have been mailed out aside from uh, six or seven chapters. So six or seven chapters do not have a either a mailing address, um, a shipping address listed in their VMS profile, or they the only address they shipped they listed was a PO box and we cannot FedEx to PO boxes. So I will be um, reaching out to, to those seven chapters if I haven't already in um, connecting with you about uh, a shipment address. Um, so again, on the shipment, um, it's best. We, we had requested if there was a public um, or business address that we could send to for these because the, the, the cost to send to private residences is so exorbitant um, with FedEx and it's the only option I have to ship. Um, so those seven chapters who um, I have reached out through a will, uh, I do need a um, address, typically a um, extension office or a parks and wildlife office is best. Um, help, you know, reach out to your advisors, um, utilize those advisors in their offices um, if this is, if that is an option that I can ship to for you. Um, all of the grit and distance pins for 2021, what we did is I, um, our team went in and uh, pulled reports from the VMS. So your chapter did not have to do any of that at all. Um, we pulled reports for members who have achieved at least uh, a minimum of eight hours of advanced training in 2021 and a minimum of one hour service reported um, in 2021. So all of that, the, the, the detail there is that all the eight hours in one hour of service, eight hours of event training in one hour of service had to be reported and approved in BMS. Um, so that's uh, each chapter re will receive or has received a list of uh, by name, the volunteers that are eligible for this award and then the corresponding number of awards that are for the people that are on that list. Um, everything is contained in the package. Um, I covered everything there on that slide. <laughs> you want to talk about the um, addresses? Yes. So um, in the past, we have had some questions about where to list your address. Um, and what I pulled is you can see once you get, once you first log into the VMS system, if you're an admin of the system um, or have an admin login, uh, there are three tabs at the top. One is for volunteers, one is for opportunities of your chapter, and the other is the main, like the contact page for your chapter. Basically, this is your chapter's profile where it says chapters. Um, that's where you uh, would list the information about who's the primary contact for your chapter, um, what is the address, mailing or shipping address. Um, and there's a picture of, um, we, we pick on Alamo area all the time, only because they're first in our alphabet. Um, but so Alamo area happened to have a PO box. However, I did have an alternate address that they sent me to ship to. So Alamo area, you don't have to worry. Um, yours have been shipped to the alternate address that you did um, share with me. Um, but this is the area where your chapter will update your profile um, in add, either add the address um, where there isn't one or add a contact um, person. And there is there is information there to add a primary contact person and an alternate contact person. So this is what is um, public about your chapter um, in the VMS. So if someone's searching and they have questions about your chapter, like this is the information where they would contact you. So 
obviously you see the website that's listed there um, on uh, the right hand side of the page. Um, it's, it's just every year, it's a good idea to go in and update a, a, that information. Um, for example, Alamo Inner Chapter had Martha Cray listed. Um, I happen to know that Martha Cray was the previous president. And just if, if you use that primary contact um, as your president, like that might be something to update every year. Um, and then also your website address. We um, went through an update of our web address, um, and even some chapters went through an update of their web address last year. So it's just a good good idea to log in and update some of this information there, especially that we're still in the kind of the first New Year phase. And if you have um, questions about that um, and how to do it, um, or whether you are um, if you have a, a login that allows you to get to this page, let, let me know. Okay. <clears throat> um, so moving on to the next item on our agenda today, uh, we'll talk a little bit about research, recertification pins. And um, if you remember our last meeting, we talked about, we talked with you about, um, we were trying to identify and um, update some of our business practices on how to get the pin, how you can request pins and get pins, how we can get pins out to you. So we needed to be efficient with our time and resources there. Um, we, since that meeting, we have updated um, our, our website. And so you can, instead of, um, instead of the old process of downloading a PDF, filling it out, and then emailing it as an attachment to us, um, we now have a pin ordering system right on our website. So you just fill out the form on our website, Mary Pro, if you'll, if you'll drop that link in the chat. I was, and I'm um, actually gonna, if you don't mind, I'd like to show them where to get to the page too. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, let me explain here, and then yep. um, we, can, we can do the demo on the page. So. Um, right now, um, you can order right on our website, and what that does, it'll you'll you'll generate you'll populate some the form on our website, and that dumps out the email to um, either Olivia, Han, or myself, or both of us, depending on what you order. So, of all of the pins um, from that are so all pins that are four thousand hours and higher come to my office. Um, and I fulfill those. Anything else um, goes to Olivia. So that's recertification pins, um, first time certification pins, certificates, um, friends of master naturalist pins, uh, and annual certification pins. Those, that, those orders will all go to Olivia. You don't have to um, think about who, who to send it to because the form on our website will do that for you once you push, push submit. Um, and so Mary Pearl is going to drive and show the process to how, how to get to the website. So um, on our, our main page, um, if you go to four chapters and then you go to chapter supplies and click on that and then just go to pins, you can scroll all the way down, but if you use the table of contents, it'll jump you down the page quickly. And you just go to pins and right there, this new link that we have on the page as of now, um, will take you there. And I just realized that I left something there, but it also explains what Michelle just said, orders for certificates 250 through 2,500 along with recertification is all filled by Olivia. Orders for 4,000 and up are all filled by Michelle. Um, was literally editing this just a few minutes ago so i will remove this extra dot and make this a hyperlink here but this new ordering form um have your vms your leadership your uh person in your chapter who is in charge of pins fill this out once a month um as michelle said they will um the form is a, uh, an intelligent form where it will automatically email the order to either to michelle or to uh, olivia or to both um and they will then coagulate all of those form entries they'll collect them for the whole month 
And at the end of each month, they will then count out and mail at the beginning of the following month um, or at the beginning of that next month, um, all those order forms that have come in throughout that month. So it's things like, here's your chapter, contact name, phone number, mailing address. Um, Michelle, remind me, I need to add the note here about PO Box. Uh, yeah, we we'll probably need the mailing or shipping address, update that to say shipping address. Yep, I'll, I'll make sure that I update that. Um, and then, so in here, I will put that I need um, three certificates, four, five first year certificates, uh, five of these, five of these, because I've done my VMS homework and I've got my data report pulled and I know that this, I don't know why, why I don't need those. I need five of these. Go all the way down, press submit, and that will then generate an email to Michelle and to uh, Olivia with those order requests. So no more PDFs and printed documents and emails and anything like that. And then what we will do is at the end, of, so we'll collect all orders um, that came in over the month at the end of the month and, and prepare them and ship at the, the first week of the, the following month. So um, for example, everything that has, uh, has I, I've got, we've got everything out now for March, but if anything were to come in through March, through the, through the 31st, um, we would, collect all those, prepare them, and ship them next week. Um, on the 4,000, I can only order 4,000 hours, the Presidential Volunteer Service Awards once a month. So I, those all have to be collected um, and ordered uh, once a month. Um, so I can't, I cannot order those things as they come in because the way our, our purchasing um, re is required what our purchasing requires is I can't make multiple purchases on that item throughout the month. I can only do one a month. And Mary and, Jane has um, still no PO boxes. Still, still, we cannot ship to PO boxes. So that is one, another difficulty, another caveat there. Yeah. Okay, any questions on that before we move on? Um, and on just the, just clarification on the PO box. So we, I am required to use FedEx for shipment. I cannot use the post office. FedEx will not ship to a post box, post office box. That's why, um, why we can't ship to a PO box. Not that it's cost prohibitive. It is oh, okay. just what we're required to use will not allow. <laughs> uh, Michelle, there's hey. a question from Carla. Hey, this is Kevin Gibbs. Um, we're always more than happy to have y'all uh, ship stuff to the extension office and you can either pick it up from there or we'll be happy to drop it off. Excellent, Wonderful. thank you, Kevin. Thank you. You're welcome. And I know many of our other county extension offices across the state um, also have that same open offer for our chapters. So there's a question in chat, Michelle. Carla said, so would you prefer monthly requests for pins, smaller number of pins to be sent to us versus requesting, for example, 20 pins for 2022 um, in, in kind of quarterly or in large chunks? So yeah, we. Um, Carla, we did, I talked with that, uh, with Olivia. So we talked through those scenarios and, um, Olivia was, um, wanted to work through her workflow. She thought about her workflow and, um, the days that she would be at headquarters to, um, mail things. And she wanted to try monthly at this time versus the quarterly. I know we talked about quarterly at the last meeting. Um, as a possible option. Um, and she wanted to try monthly at this time, um, hoping that we could be, um, that it would be timely in that as people earn them, we can get them out in the month. Um, and it would possibly help minimize the like mass ordering of more, pin more pins than what was needed. 
And she asked so, about that um, versus shipping costs. Not that, like this is something we're going to try for the rest of the year, and we may adjust those practices in the coming year. Yep. So y'all share your feedback as we're going through this process and we're trying this um, new online ordering form. Please let us know how um, how your your chapter is functioning with this as well. We appreciate that. And the one thing I didn't mention, um, and but it is listed there on this slide that's shown right now. Um, the one thing we would like to try and do is um, utilize the opportunity of being together for the annual meeting. And so the all of the orders that would come in through September and hopefully the first half of October, we'd like to be able to bring those for your chapters at the annual meeting. Um, and kind of utilize that opportunity to and minimize some of the, the shipping costs um, with that opportunity. Excellent. Okay, any final questions or I'm gonna move on? Perfect, okay. Um, the, the next couple of slides we're going to talk about our upcoming events that we have. Um, we are getting into to our busy season, y'all's busy season, um, as you go into spring and you have um, outreach events and you have programs happening. Um, we wanted to make you aware of some of the, the statewide events that we have on our calendars, um, specifically with our TMN Tuesday, so that, uh, again, just to help you plan as we get into the next couple of months. Um, TMN Tuesdays in 2022, April 12th and May 10th are coming up. Again, as always, these are the second Tuesday of the month at the noon hour recorded and put on our website uh, very quickly afterwards. Um, we do have the next two months scheduled. Normally we only have um, them on a month to month basis, but we have some really exciting speakers and we just couldn't help ourselves that we wanna share um, the, these opportunities with you guys early, especially as we are entering into that busy season as well. Um, so Sarah Coles is going to be joining us um, from Texas Children and Nature, um, which is a fantastic organization in Texas, um, helping to create healthier, happier, and smarter children engaged in nature um, uh, and outdoor activities. Um, she's gonna uh, talk about health and nature liaisons um, that is not the final exact title. We're coming up with a slightly catchier title, but again, we just couldn't help ourselves and wanted to um, share uh, Sarah's presentation um, with you guys. So we'll be sending out some emails with that, the final title, her bio, um, the topic uh, description of her presentation here shortly, but really talking about the nature and health connections um, that her programming has, has uh, worked on. So that is April 12th at noon. And then May 10th, um, we are having one of our own. Richard Halbrin will be our uh, presenter for our May TMN Tuesday event. Um, as many of you know, Richard is on our Master Naturalist Leadership Team and is uh, uh, always at the annual meeting. So uh, it's exciting to have him as our uh, May TMN Tuesday event speaker um, with Parks and Wildlife. He um, is going to focus his presentation on getting the Re Recovering America's Wildlife Act across the finish line um, and some of the, the great potential funding and programming, conservation programming that could come from um, this kind of pivotal moment in um, natural resource history with uh, uh, Recovering America's Wildlife Act uh, moving its way through Congress. So that is happening again May 10th. Um, these, you guys are hearing this first. We have not put this on the website or put out emails. So as soon as we um, kind of clean that stuff up and put it into an email format um, with some more content there, we'll be sending it out to the listserv and sending it to, to y'all to include in your, your chapter newsletters and on your chapter websites. Okay. Um, the next item for your calendar is our Be the Change workshop that is coming up next week. Um, Michelle and I are really excited. We spent most of the morning um, kind of going through the final agenda for next week's workshop. Um, this is our culmination um, and kind of um, stepping stone for our Be the Change uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility series that we kicked off in 2021. Um, this is a virtual workshop. Um, we did send out the registration link uh, last week 
Friday, I want to say, um, whatever three, day of the week 315 was. We sent it out um, to all of our chapter presidents. We encourage you to have at least one to two members from your chapter um, engaged in this workshop. This is a um, this is a working workshop for us to um, to help develop and build these playbook uh, materials with your chapters, things that you can actively take home from the from this work group um, together, help us to build some of these work programs for the state program as well. Um, and so uh, please come prepared or invite your chapter members appropriately, those that are um, able and willing to engage in this kind of a, a, a virtual workshop. Um, like I said, it will have breakout rooms. We will have a break because that is a long period of time, but it is going to go over the lunch hour. So um, bring snacks if you're, this is my snacks, um, bring snacks or bring uh, a working lunch uh, for the, that events as well. Um, if your chapter has diversity, equity, inclusion chairs, of course, they're um, absolutely um, on that registration, uh, need to be included in that registration. Oh, and then final tasks. Um, Michelle and I are working on a kind of a resource document to share with you ahead of time so that you have um, some resources to, to read over the weekend. Our, our internal goal is to have it to you by the end of this week so that we can um, give you the weekend and early next week to get some of that read. It is, again, I, I keep saying the word working document. It is going to be a working living document that we're all going to collaborate on together. Um, and so we're going to send it to you early so that you can read through it um, and come prepared to that workshop as well. Okay, Michelle, did I miss anything on the Be The Change? No, I think you covered it. Um, I see the it question. Busy from, all day. <laughs> I see the question from Pam, why it was scheduled for Wednesday rather than a Tuesday. Most of our things are on Tuesdays. Um, we have two keynote speakers, um, Dr. Roel Lopez and David Bugs are joining us and to accommodate their schedules, um, we uh, are have, hosting the workshop on Wednesday. Um, so I apologize about the, the schedule shift off of our typical Tuesday schedules, um, but y'all are gonna- yeah. Did we say April was busy yet? <laughs> have we told you that yet? <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> Michelle, you want to talk about April? Yeah. Um, hey, that was a great segue, and I didn't even um, remember that this slide was next. <laughs> April is a busy month. Um, I took a look at my own schedule, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's the worst I've ever seen. Um, April is National Volunteer Recognition Month. Um, we have our April 6th Be the Change uh, workshop that we just told you about coming up next week. April 22nd is also Earth Day. And in that same week, set April 17th through the 23rd is National Volunteer Recognition Week. Um, and then the, the whole month of April is, um, it's actually International Volunteer Recognition Month. Um, we have at the end of April 29th, uh, the City Nature Challenge is starting, which many of you are, many of you and your chapters are involved in. And then um, right after that, in May, we have our master, our Texas Master Naturalist Virtual Volunteer Fair. Um, one thing I want to mention about the Virtual Volunteer Fair is that we are, um, through the end of Friday this week, we are still accepting and looking for um, projects, um, submissions. And so any of your, um, any of your partners um, or your advisors, if they have and any projects, um, virtual um, or uh, place-based projects uh, that uh, multiple people from all over the state can work on, um, we, we would love your submissions. Um, so we, we try to focus the vol virtual volunteer fair with virtual projects um, because you asked us, your, your members, um, our chapters asked us last year, um, to hold a virtual volunteer fair um, in early spring, early summer to kind of prep for the hottest times of the month um, to give you some more opportunities to be working on while it's hot, but it's something virtual. So you can do that from the comfort of your um, air conditioned home at that time. Um, so we, again, please urge your partners, um, 
share this information, share the virtual volunteer fair, call for proposals with them. Um, we, uh, we still need more for the, the upcoming event. Um, and then we, all of what we receive um, will be presented uh, statewide to our, any master naturalists who wants to attend. Um, May 4th and 5th are the dates that we have held for this right now. So, and you can, um, the registration is live. You can go in and register to attend, but you may also wanna wait to see what the projects are first. So um, we'll have that up. Uh, I think our target is next week, right? Yes, registration's not on there yet. That's on my to-do list to oh, get done today. So yeah. Sorry. It's okay. I, I jumped ahead. <laughs> Kevin, did you have a question? Uh, I just had a statement. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be recognizing the South Texas chapter of Master Naturalists at the April uh, Commissioner's Court meeting on April 27th. So if there uh, is anybody that's down in this area that wants to join us, uh, we'd love to have y'all. So it's at 8, 8.30 in the morning. Awesome. That, thank you, Kevin. That's an excellent um, excellent reason to go back to the slide because one thing I, um, one thing we wanted to ask your chapters is what are your plans? Um, we hope that at your local level, your chapter will celebrate National Volunteer Month, um, National Volunteer Week, um, and use it as an opportunity to highlight some of your projects, um, things that master naturalists do all year long, every day. Um, one of the things I always say, you know, April 22nd is Earth Day. Um, Earth Day is one day, but master naturalists are making a change and making a difference every day. Um, and so let's let's use April um, this month and Volunteer Recognition Week and Earth Day to, to show um, what your chapters are doing on a daily basis, what impacts you're making, and then also celebrate your volunteers at the local level as well. So what are your plans? Kevin mentioned his, uh, a one for his chapter. Every day is Master Naturalist Day, yes. <laughs> Um, Kathy Pittman says we have events almost every weekend, so we'll have extra goodies at the monthly meeting. Great. So we're asking um, if y'all want to unmute or if you want to add it into chat, um, tell us something that you have planned for um, recognizing your chapter volunteers this month, this week, that week. So Christine says her group will be hosting an annual second grade nature day. And uh, this is their sixth year, um, sixth or more a year for this event. And Christine, is that a, you'll be holding it on Earth Day or during um, National Volunteer Week? Uh, we will actually be holding it on April 22nd. We go to the local um, elementary school and they have six classes of students. So each one of my members picks a topic in nature that they're excited, you know, they're most excited about. And um, the kids rotate through our classes and it's like a huge deal. The kids absolutely love it, you know. And um, usually afterwards, uh, like one lady is called the seed lady. We've got the butterfly lady. I'm the frog lady. You know, that's kind of thing. We've even had a frog emergency at one point, which is interesting. But uh, a giant uh, bullfrog happened to be on the playground after it rained. And one girl comes running in, <clears throat> excuse me, to tell me we have a frog emergency. And I was like, well, I've never heard of that. Let's go see. And it was this giant bullfrog was terrified because all the kids were screaming and hollering. But basically, yeah, he was blown up as huge as he could be and his legs all spread out. And the boys were like, can we poke him with a stick? Can we do this? I'm like, well, you don't want me to poke you, right? And they're like, no. And I'm like, no. And they're like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I'm going to go pick it up and take it away from here. <laughs> and so um, we had people go get containers or whatever, but it was hilarious. I mean, you know, of course the frog was saved and put somewhere else but then he became a display for the rest of the day but you know so frog emergencies can happen <laughs> does any any other chapter are you um thinking about planning something or do you have plans in the works already um michelle collins says we have earth day bay day in corpus on four nine so April 9th, um, they have a table event there. 
Deborah Jones says we're working with a couple of our county agri-life agents to get some nature videos into the, the K through sixth grade classrooms um, with worksheets uh, to be filled out with one simple question from the video for Earth Day. That's great. What about celebrating your volunteers? At your chapter level. So Katie says they have lots of outreach opportunities in April and we're also planning a chapter outing to a local state park or natural area. So great. Excellent. Well, well we plan on celebrating you in April, so stay tuned for more. Yep, exactly. All right. Um, so Michelle kind of talked about the virtual volunteer fair, um, which is great. And I'm not going to to rehash it. I did drop the virtual volunteer fair link in the chat. Um, again, the the request came from from this group right here to host another virtual volunteer fair for your chapter members to be able to um, find projects uh, during the hottest summer months to be able to volunteer with uh, virtually or at a distance. And so we are um, seeking your help to get this, uh, this virtual job fair, so to speak, out to our program partners, our conservation organizations um, who have opportunities that they want to present to chapters, to volunteers, to recruit um, for. So um, this event is only successful if we have projects um, ready for volunteers to sign up to. And those projects only come from that call for pro project proposals. We did extend the deadline. Um, we extended it to Friday. So please help us to share that with your conservation partners, your local um, state parks, Audubon groups, nature centers, conservation organizations um, who might have volunteer opportunities that they need um, help on virtually or at a distance this summer or later throughout the year. Um, I will get registration for our chapter members open um, here shortly as well. Okay. Um, the next event on our calendar, we've got a lot of time to think about, um, although it feels like a lot of time to think about. Um, it's actually a lot of work that's already happening with our um, 23rd annual meeting. Um, if you have not put that date on your calendar, um, what have you been doing? Um, you need to have that date on your calendar now. Um, October 20th through the 23rd, we are going to be in Houston. Uh, we're excited about this year. I got a chance to meet with some of the local chapters um, in the Houston area last week. Um, we walked the space of the, the Omni where we're going to be. We have lots of ideas. They have a ton of ideas of some great opportunities and speakers and, um, and uh, presentations to be able to share with you guys at this year's annual meeting. Um, our call for proposals is officially live, um, but with so much happening this week, we're going to send it out to you guys next week so that we're not email inboxing um, crazy. We're not throwing a thousand emails at you all at once. So it is actually on our website. If you want to click on that annual meeting link, um, it is there uh, officially now. Um, and that deadline is May 31st, but we will officially launch it with social media and websites and links and emails and all that um, next week. So you guys are getting a head start on that. Um, and like I said, I met with the local chapters and they have uh, tons of ideas for field trips and um, help to be able to, to put some of these contests together and things like that. So there's a lot more to come on that. Okay, any questions? Oh, oh and Sam said mothing space around the hotel. That was one of the very first things that we did when we walked around the hotel is they said, where is Sam going to be? Um, so we have a spot already picked out for you. I have a picture. I'll text it to you. Okay. Um, moving on, if there's any other questions about the annual meeting, um, we will have more information at next month's meeting, I promise. Um, otherwise, send that to me in the meantime. Um, our AgriLife bookstore, officially retitled as AgriLife Learn, has our merchandise on it. We dropped a bunch of new merchandise off over the last couple of weeks. So there's New shirts and new, new embroidery materials, polos and aprons and hats are all in stock now. Um, so please check that stuff out by going to that merchandise link right there. 
AgriLife Learn. Um, some more gear while you're at it, while you're looking at trying to, to master naturalist your life and put dragonflies everywhere. Um, put it on your vehicle. Our license plate um, is still live. Um, I have promised to this group that we would provide you with quarterly reports on sales. Um, so we got our Q1 reports uh, last week and we sold 55 um, plates in Q1 of 2022. And so you can see, of course, when you first launch a plate, you've got a big influx and then it'll taper off as folks are um, either renewing or are uh, visiting their Master Naturalist plate website for the first time. Um, so again, help us to, to promote this, to market the opportunity to, to put that dragonfly on your license plate. Um, and then with that, the last uh, couple of dates that you want to make sure that you still have on your calendar are our chapter presidents meetings that we have throughout the rest of the year. Um, note, I got an email from a few of y'all asking exactly um, what schedule these chapter presidents meetings follow and generally they're the last Tuesday of the month. We have a few that are, are off schedule based off of holidays. So May, for example, is not the last Tuesday because that's Memorial Day. Um, and then we've got a few in, uh, in the summer months that are also hitting on holidays and things like that. Um, so just take a quick picture of this. Um, otherwise, um, we'll send out those weekly e those emails and remind you of these as they come up. Okay, Michelle, anything on that one? Um, no, Sam, Sam just says he's, his driving has improved since he got the Master Naturalist license plate. Oh, okay, good. So, yes, since he's a representative of the program now. <laughs> All right, and then um, that concludes the slides that I have. Um, so we've got some time here built in for some roundtable questions. If there's any questions about um, any of the slides that we've had previous, any of the topics or questions that you want to ask um, to Michelle and I and the group. Or more importantly, of each other. Or of that's, each other. that's the time I we have... wanted to give you is um, asking questions of each other as president um, or asking some of the presidents. If you're a new president, you have questions um, of some of more of the experienced presidents online. Like this, we wanted to give you a few minutes to kind of network like that through this forum as well. I have one that just came in on chat. Um, it came in privately, but it's it's open. It says, um, any update on when training for WordPress? So the website will be done. I've asked that question. We, they've hired the new person. Um, I think that new person was trying to get their feet underneath them. And so as soon as I know, you will know. Um, and I'm, I'm pushing on that button as well. Um, so I don't have an answer. I'm just I'm, I'm encouraging it quickly. Um, also wondering about the president Slack group launch. Um, so I thought that went out already. Let me double check with Bert and I apologize if it did not go out um, to everybody. So I will make sure that our, our chapter presidents are all added to the um, to the Slack group. So that's on my list. Okay. Hey, this is this is Kevin Gibbs again. Um, just a couple of things. Uh, AgriLife regularly puts out WordPress trainings. Would those be helpful? So, Kevin, they they did. They don't. They did. They <laughs> AgriLife did, and that's what we had going for us with uh, both Master Gardeners and Master Naturalist. And then the individual who was hosting that for us got removed, or got not removed. What's the word when you get rifted? Um, in the, the COVID kind of employee shuffle. Um, and so they just rehired that position to help facilitate those WordPress trainings for master gardeners and master naturalists. His name is um, Jacob or Joshua. Um, it's a J name. Um, and, and he was getting his feet underneath them. And um, so I've been working with Paul Pleasant to try and get this uh, going again. Well, I've received um, notifications at least one, maybe two this week of WordPress trainings. So I would be more than happy to, to share those uh, with you. Please do. You Please email that to me. And those yeah. Those uh, the other, yeah, more, I'm more than happy to share those with you. The other thing I was going to bring up was, was the reason why we go to commissioner's court and recognize the volunteers. Um, 
it, uh, in my opinion, it's important for our county to recognize the value of the service that that master naturalists and master gardeners uh, provide. And um, uh, just during this last year, uh, the two groups combined for over a half a million dollars worth of volunteer service. So I, I think it, it's helpful because then if we need something from them, we we they're used to seeing us and knowing what what our volunteer groups do and and they're, they're more likely to respond whenever we go to them with requests so uh, that's why i always make sure to to recognize them during the month of april and we and we do that every single year we didn't we were not able to do it last year because of covid but we try to do that every single year and show up with with both the volunteer groups so that they know what they've been doing in the county and kevin you're a county extension agent in which county New Aces County. New Aces County with our South Texas chapter. Yes, ma'am. Okay. So, so y'all, if, and that was answering a question in the chat um, for, for Sharon, but um, work with your county extension agents. They have, if, if you're, if your chapter does not associate as closely with your county extension agent, um, rebuild that relationship because they know those county commissioners. They frequently go in and present topics like this or present feedback for the counties um, and, and work with them to be able to get an opportunity like Kevin's talking about, to be able to go back and talk about your, your county's return on investment and in conservation and volunteers in that in that area. Um, the, the service value that you're providing as volunteers for your communities. Great, thank you. Michelle, there's- Carla um, has a good question uh, that she's listed here that applies to all chapters. Um, how do chapters share uh, tre treasurer reports, treasurer's reports um, with their general membership or do they? Um, and do you post this information publicly on your website or password protected? Um, so if any chapters out there want to share their process um, on how they share their treasurer's reports um, and how often. So Suzanne um, mentions that they post theirs monthly to um, groups.io groups and then all members can view there. And I'm not familiar with groups.io. So um, Suzanne, you might want to, if you could explain that to us. Yeah, so it's Suzanne Atkinson, uh, Highland Lakes. So groups.io is nothing more than a chat site, if you will. So it's an app you download, you have a password, a log on for your particular group. And there's many, many groups on there. So obviously ours is Highland Lakes Master Naturalist. Um, we have an administrator for that. You can become a member of the group. So all our members are a group of that. And that's how I pass information to them as well. Uh, I can email the entire list from groups.io. Um, we hang, you can make files in there for categories so for the, like for the secretary's uh, notes monthly and the financial reports monthly. They go, all go into a file, but they also get emailed to everybody. And then the person that is responsible for uploading that then puts it in its specific file. For example, it'd be 2022 treasurer's reports and all the reports would go into that. So it just, it, it's a way for us to communicate uh, easily and to everybody. Uh, thank you for explaining that. Um, there's also been a couple of things uh, for people who can't see the chat. Um, some people share slides. Some chapters share slides during their chapter meetings each quarter. Uh, they also include, it's also included with the agenda and minutes when they're sent out, um, when the invite is sent out through VMS. Um, another chapter posts a summary in the monthly meeting or in meeting minutes. One chapter says they post theirs on their, their own Slack channel. Um, another chapter says we share basic account balance information monthly at the monthly chapter meetings. They are then in our monthly minutes. Another chapter has theirs as part of the monthly chapter meetings and then the actual report, report is available um, on their website or through a password protected area. So lots of great ideas there in the chat, Carla. I 
Excellent. Michelle, there were some more questions in chat that came in um, for kind of open president's discussion. There was one specifically that you and I have worked on, but we haven't um, come to a conclusion on. And um, uh, oh, I just lost it again. This chat keeps moving. Um, there was the discussion that we had last month about the timeline for graduation to initial certification and what the CMOP means by one year deadline from commencing the initial training program. Um, Michelle and I are, are working on that uh, clarification. We've got it almost complete um, with everything that's been happening in trying to evolve all the other events that we have, um, trying to find time to really focus in on that and create that, uh, that resource document for you. Um, we have not gotten that uh, off of our task list yet. So that's something that we owe you um, to be able to help clarify and create some of those additional resource guidelines. Resource clarifications, not guidelines. Okay. And then Liz has a question. Um, she has a question of hers in the Al regarding Alamo area. Um, so Liz, I don't know if you want to describe that a little more. Um, there's, there's, I think there's a lot more things you can describe about watching video presentations and, and um, listening or you, if you're able to um, provide more info on that question to the group. I don't know if you're able to use your mic, Liz. If, if not, just um, chat, text chat, whether or not you have microphone capabilities today. And um, if you don't, um, so I'll, she has got no mic. So I'll try and summarize um, I, my understanding of um, the situation that you presented or sent to us, Liz. Um, so your chapter, uh, as I understand it, or what you sent is your chapter has board meetings um, and advanced training. So you have a chapter meeting and an advanced training all in one, um, all in one evening. And so your chapter has a meeting and then you have your advanced training. Um, and I'm not sure if both of them are recorded or not. Um, but I know you said the advanced training was reported. And so I think one of the concerns was uh, the way your chapter structured the meeting, the chapter meeting or board meeting and the advanced training it ended up being a very long night. So uh, more than two hours um, for those two things to happen. And so, um, and it took it sometimes late into the night. And so your question, I think, was based on your chapter specific scenario, um, whether you could watch the recorded version of your chapters presented AT later. Um, and uh, so yes, she says, yes, just the AT is recorded. Okay, so um, our, the policy that we have on recorded, watching recorded AT later only applies to our TMN Tuesday events. Um, my question back to your chapter, Liz, is actually, does your chapter, um, is, there, is, is there a different um, process that your chapter, uh, like, I guess what you decide, what you described was the board meetings or the chapter meetings went very long and then the AT was presented, which is another hour after that. Um, can your chapter adjust the way it, it operates that evening? Um, and one example came to mind um, of how the Hill Country chapter has their chapter meetings in advanced training um, as po a possible solution. And so, um, Carla Stang is actually on today, and I wondered if maybe Carla, you could um, describe how your chapter um, holds its its monthly meetings um, and the advanced training that's uh, along with it. Sure, happy to. Um, and in fact, last night was our first um, hybrid meeting where we actually had some in person and uh, a Zoom and live stream options for our members to attend. Awesome. We, 
we ended up having about uh, 35 or so in person and um, over 60 Zoom, and I'm not sure how many uh, attended on live stream. Uh, but what we do is we have a, a we open doors at 6, 6 p.m. at the venue. And so we have a half an hour for people to come ahead of time and socialize a little bit, which was a real good thing last night because uh, a lot of people hadn't seen each other for a long time. And then uh, from 6.30 to 7, I do a uh, summary kind of business meeting. So I summarize uh, a lot of the content that we go over here at the president meetings, and then also some local highlights of things that are going on. Um, last night, I had someone from our uh, pollinator garden assistance uh, program. She was the program lead, uh, actually presented some information. Um, and we also do our um, volunteer pin, service pin distributions um, and take pictures and recognize our volunteers that way. Um, and so that takes us and, and, and any other kind of updates. I mean, this we, we're ramping up for our 20th anniversary as a chapter this year. And so we had a lot of other things to talk about this, uh, this month. Um, but then we turn it over to our one hour AT session and um, we last year was the first year we allowed our members to um, enter credit into VMS for a one half an hour, so 0 0.5 hours of um, volunteer time for attending the business meeting, and then they do an hour of time uh, for their AT session if they attend both of those things. Any questions? If you can, I mean, the total time on that front end of the meeting for your chapter meeting is, is really very minuscule. Half an um, hour at the most. If that, yeah, of the ones that I've been at. Yeah, and the majority of the time is given to AT. Right. Um, and so you said your meeting starts. Um, what is the latest that your meeting goes? Well, the AT session uh, credit is only for one hour, but, uh, and, and the speakers are asked to limit their presentation for an hour, you know, including question answer period, of course. Um, so people can leave at eight o'clock and they'll get their hour AT credit. Um, and we've had rare occasion where we've gone a little bit longer than that, but it's up to people whether they stay or not. And we record it, and so and people can view it on YouTube, but they are not going to be getting credit for AT for that session if it's uh, post live. And I, I see a, a few chap chapters in the chat have mentioned that they have their AT first, and then they hold their business meeting after that. Um, so there's some, you know, there's some options for different solutions there. Um, yeah, there's lots of there's lots of um, ideas uh, and examples coming in now. Thank you, Carla. And then I think the one thing I wanted to mention um, that I'm familiar with with the Hill Country chapter too is that they the chapter does have a board meeting. And Carla, correct me. Um, the board meeting happens separately or at a different time. So the, the board meeting isn't actually like the, what you're at the chapter meeting, what's presented is basically a summary of the board meeting that happened earlier. Um, and sometimes that's earlier that day or yes. sometimes it's the week before. Yeah, actually it is the same day. And um, so we have our, our board meeting from uh, roughly 2.30 to 4 in the afternoon. And then we uh, finish and then we take our speaker. Uh, we offer our speaker a dinner um, for coming in and speaking. And so the board members will go out to dinner with the speaker. And then we head over to the uh, venue for the session. And Carla, um what would you, I mean, generalities, what would you classify your members, like the, how many of your membership would be kind of the um, older age category um, versus working, I guess, my age category, younger? Uh, we have, uh, the majority of our membership is in a uh, retired or elderly. I think our average age is uh, it, like 71. 
And um, so last night I announced to the membership that uh, our new normal is hybrid, meaning we will have in-person and a couple virtual options. And I, I think people really appreciated that that because a lot of, I mean, we have 10 counties in our chapter. So some people would have to travel a long distance at night and that's not, you know, there's a lot of deer out there and people's eyesight's not what it used to be. I don't even like to drive out at night, um, but giving people the option is I think a good, a good thing. And, and we, I offer that as an option for our board also for our board meetings um, in particular, because Again, 10 counties for our chapter, I may not have, I can't keep pulling from Kerrville all the time for board members. You know, I wanted uh, to give other people the opportunity from further away to be on the board, but, and, and so being on a Zoom board meeting helps them uh, participate in that fashion. So a little bit of a follow-up question in the chat has come. Um, one of our chapter presidents has asked uh, if your your chapters overall could share when your meetings are held. So if you could share kind of the uh, the day and time of day that your your chapter board meetings are held um, in the chat would probably be best so that you can capture that. And we will share today's chat on um, on the website afterwards so that y'all can uh, record some of these comments as well. Because there's that, that we had this whole discussion uh, with Terry in the Coastal Prairie chapter here recently about that play between, do you host your chapter uh, monthly meetings, board meetings in the evenings to allow for working folks, or do you uh, put them during the day, um, which then changes your audience potential um, but then you can have them longer because you're not uh, held in by, you know, wanting to get done quickly before dinner and, and driving time. Um, so we, we recognize that it is not easy um, and y'all are in a tough pickle to, to schedule these in many cases because um, you're, you're feeding off of, um, of your demographics and their needs and your chapter members um, uh, that you're wanting or those that you're are not there. Um, that that you wish would be there. And so um, another kind of another thing to think about uh, along with board meetings and Carla mentioned um, or somebody here mentioned um, uh, diversity and um, when members were available to attend like so one of the things we may talk about in our um, our be the change workshop next week is um, diversity of board members, diversity in your chapter. And so one thing your chapter might want to look at is time of day. Um, time of day that you do business and operations, is that limiting or assisting with um, your diversity, equity, inclusion efforts? So that's, that's another, um, another thing to throw in there to think about. So there's lots of things coming in the, the chat. Um, and we're coming up right on 12.59. So I don't know how much more, how much um, we have more time for. Um, there is a question, uh, can chapter members get, it's jumping around, hold on. Um, yeah, Carrie's question um, is, it uh, about AT hours for um, for advanced training, uh, advanced training hours for recorded meetings, um, and that's clarified in our the the who, what, where, when, why is clarified in our temporary training policy um, that's linked on our our website, and I'll drop that link in here shortly. Okay, so. Um, wanting to keep to our timeline as well for today's meeting. I do show that it's one o'clock. Um, I really did enjoy having this extra 15 minutes at the end to, to have this open discussion. I realized that the chat uh, kind of went fast and furious and I have not read everything. Um, so I will be grabbing that chat and posting it to our website so that you guys have access to, 
to be able to review and read through um, all of these great suggestions and ideas from different chapters, how they've uh, scheduled their chapter meetings um, and their, their board meetings and their advanced trainings as well. Um, so thank you guys for that. Um, with that, I'm going to get the slides and the recording um, posted as well, and I'm going to stop the recording.